What's up guys and welcome back to another video from Tech Girl Brianna! So before we get started, let's grab some caffeine. Hold that thought. Alright, got myself a coffee. What are you guys drinking? Oh, you don't have a coffee yet? That's okay. Go ahead and pause this video. I'll wait. All right, great. I hope you got yourself a coffee. If you don't drink coffee, maybe some tea or a warm beverage or something. And let's get started with this video. Welcome back to the very second episode of the continuing series of mine called Tech Tuesdays. As I read through my comments that I get through from you guys, as well as my Instagram messages and emails, I seem to get this question a lot. And you guys ask me, hey, Brianna. Yes. I want to be a front-end web developer, but I don't know where to start. What should I expect when I'm in an interview? Is there anything you can suggest that I can look out for? Good question. I'll answer that now. But since I don't know the answers 100% myself, I did some research by asking a few front-end developers that I personally know. And here's what they told me. All right, the first thing you should know that when you are in a front-end web developer interview is that the interviewer will automatically assume that you already have at least a basic understanding of JavaScript. Now, if you don't, then I highly recommend you have that under your belt. Then you will have the upper hand for when they are choosing a candidate that they want to hire. Now, there are a lot of front-end developing jobs, especially from a few years ago, that didn't require front-end web developers to even know a single line of JavaScript. But as times are changing, the traditional front-end developer role, as in traditional from like a few years ago, but that's becoming more of a back-end role. It is rumored that a front-end web developer is starting to do more of a back-end job, but it doesn't hurt to understand and know JavaScript. One of the developers I was speaking to. He personally interviews front-end web developers occasionally and he told me that he'll typically have the interviewee execute a timeout sequence. So you're probably wondering what the heck is a timeout sequence. So to put in similar terms, it's basically changing from one state to another. You can use that with JavaScript. The one that he recommended was using Angular. I would recommend doing a little bit of research on that because there's various different ways that you can make a timeout sequence. An example is maybe when you click a button, it changes the background image of a page to red. And maybe if you click the button again, it changes the color to green. And maybe for the timeout sequence part, uh, each state is only held for maybe like 30 seconds or 45 seconds or whatever you want to program it to be. But you want to be able to demonstrate that you can do something like that, that you can change the state of something to another. You should also be able to demonstrate how to create an event loop. So what an event loop does, it constantly checks to see if the event queue is empty or not. And if there is something in the event queue, then it's moved to the call stack. But if not, then nothing happens. No worry, nothing will break. <laughs> An event loop is basically just a message dispatcher. Another thing you must know is how does DNS work? Lucky for you, I actually made a whole video on what the heck is a DNS server and what does it do, how does it work, and everything you need to know about it. This video is a little bit older. I made it at the beginning of the year, but if you're interested in watching it anyways, I recommend clicking the video on the screen or just checking the link down in the description. It'll be the very first link that you can click. I'm not going to get into it in this video just because I felt like I did a pretty good job explaining it in the other video and there's a lot to explain about. I can just talk about it forever because there's just a lot of things you need to know that goes into a DNS server. Now this one may seem really silly but, but I highly recommend that you get good at googling and not just googling in general like how to google something. I mean how to google problems that you may have while you are developing. It is rumored and joked about that 50% of your job as a developer is just Googling things. You probably spend more time on Stack Overflow than you do on your actual code. That is something that one of my front-end web developer friends have told me. And I thought that was funny because I was like, I guess that's just what front-end web developing is. You're just sharing and exchanging knowledge and going back and forth, testing ideas, and knowledge is power. So the more knowledge you can put out there and retrieve the better. And maybe if you're someone that doesn't know how to ask Google what you're looking for, because that does take skill and practice to do, I would recommend with brainstorming first. Try to identify the problem and try to ask yourself in simple terms what it is that you're looking for. Obviously, you're not gonna, like, let's say that your code is breaking and you don't know why. Well, you need to figure out where is the problem and then you can work off of that. Another thing you may be asked is which framework 
you normally work with or which ones you are familiar with. For CSS, do you use frameworks such as Bootstrap? Or what about JavaScript? Do you use Vue? In my last project I worked on, we used Vue.js. Are you a WordPress developer and you know how to work with themes and how to code on there? Make sure you explain that to the person that you are interviewing with. You never know, it could bring you a great advantage that you have a lot of knowledge in a specific framework. Another piece of advice that I received from my friend who is a senior full stack developer, he told me that when he interviews his candidates, he looks for two main goals, what their potential is like for the company and how they can grow with them and also their current level. The current level part, he says, is not as crucial as the potential because typically when they hire you, they want to keep you around for a while. So maybe if your current level isn't that great, but you show a lot of potential, then that gives you an advantage over someone that maybe their current level is good, but their potential is kind of not so good. Just show that you're enthusiastic and you are a hard worker and I believe you can get far. You must be willing to show some of the side projects you have worked on. Although there are a lot of projects that you typically have to sign an NDA with, I would recommend just taking on some projects or maybe reviewing those NDAs and try to see if you can at least show a little bit of code that's all right to show to future employers that you want to be hired by. And if you really have nothing to show, then I really recommend that you get it started on some sort of portfolio right now. There's plenty of free projects you can work on. There's many people out there that need help and that will be more than willing to let you show off your code to some future employer that maybe wants to hire you. They are also making sure that they are hiring someone that has a drive that is making sure that their web application or whatever project that they're working on is accessible to all end users that they are looking for. You need to show that you are passionate about that and you're willing to do whatever it takes to make it happen. And another interesting uh, piece of advice and tip that I received is being able to have a concrete, clear definition on CSS floats. In simpler terms, I will leave a link down below with a concrete definition so you can study it and test out yourself. In my simple terms, to me it means that CSS floats is basically you're telling a browser where you want an element to fit uh, based on the resolution of a user's screen. I am not the best at explaining that, so just go ahead and click the link below. That will explain it way better than I ever can. Well, anyways, I hope this video has helped at least some of you out. My very first interview, interviewing as a front-end web developer did not go very well because I was not at all prepared. I did not prepare for anything, so it's no wonder they didn't give me the job. <laughs> but now with this knowledge, I have increased my chances of getting hired far more than I could ever imagine. So it's good to have this knowledge in the future when I apply for a front-end web developer again. Right now, I don't do front-end web developing full-time, but I am a part-time front-end web developer freelancer. I am actually currently working on my portfolio. I just have been putting other things, I've just been putting that on the back burner, but once I have my portfolio up, I can go ahead and put it up for you guys. So you guys can use my site as an example. And if you'd like to see what I'm up to on a daily basis, Basis, go ahead and follow me on my Instagram account. I already surpassed 3,000 followers. I think I'm close to 3,500 right now, which is amazing. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I post another video. I post a video every single Tuesday on this YouTube channel until further notice, but for now, every single Tuesday. So I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye everyone.